This is called uh, multiple regression. And basically, what we did in chapter 13, which is called simple, we had a, a single y value, a single, a single y value, let's say somebody's height, weight. And we had somebody's height trying to predict their weight. What we're going to be doing in chapter 14 is simply extending this to multiple regression, where you're going to have not just one x, but many x's that are going to be used to predict somebody's weight. For example, x could be somebody's height, x could be, another x could be somebody's age, another thing could be somebody's, uh, the amount of exercise that they do, it could even be their sex, you can put a one and a zero for, 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 for female and male. Um, but of course, in order to distinguish the x's, we're going to call this one x1, this one x2, and this one x3, just to make it, uh, differentiate them. And you'll, when, if you want to do the actual data, you collect data on your last, four, each person, four questions. And if it could be five or six or seven or just even two, but, you know, a bunch of questions. And then you're going to run them through the computer. Now, the, good, the bad news is that the calculations are much more complicated than Chapter 13 because the formula has to take into account not just the impact of x on y or x2 on y or x3 on y, which it does, but also has the joint impact, x1 and x2. Also, x2 and x3 have an interaction between them. It gets much more complicated. That's the bad news. The good news is because it's so complicated, you're not going to be responsible for any kind of calculation, or very minimal amount of calculation, I should say. The, every example in the homework, and hopefully online, well, online for sure, and on the test, if you take the test in class, we'll be, I'll be giving you the data. I'll be giving you a printout, an Excel printout in particular, of all the results. And your job will simply be to interpret the printout. So we're going to spend a few minutes today, or well, two minutes today, and then, of course, on Monday, the whole period. We're going to do all of Chapter 14 on, on Monday. Um, what? Oh, test is Monday, right. So Wednesday. Uh, finishing up Chapter 14 on Wednesday. Um, now, so basically what you're going to do is, after all is said and done, instead of having the equation B0 plus B1 times X, the equation you're going to develop in Chapter 14 is going to be B1 times X1, B2 times X2, indicating how much of an impact X2 has on the, on the, on the, equation, on the final prediction of Y. And then B3 times X3, if you have three of them, and if you have four of them, be B4 times X4. And like a lot of homeworks, only have two of them. So it stops right here, B1, X1, B2, X2. So it's very similar to the previous chapter. And in this chapter, you don't have to calculate the B1 and the B0s and the B2s. It's automatically done for you by the computer. So the only homework I ask you to do between now and, I guess, Wednesday, or if, between Monday and Wednesday, if you want to study for the test till now, is to take a couple of examples, which I'll point out uh, in the book in a couple of seconds, and simply run them through the Excel and basically bring into class just a printout, and we'll spend the day interpreting those printouts. So basically, you have to know how to use the Excel regression, which is the same regression as you use for Chapter 13, which hopefully you did by now. And if anybody really can't figure it out, I can show, show it to them in two seconds. But, but basically, all I want you to do is to produce a printout for a couple of examples. Um, yes? What's B2? B2 is just the, the impact that variable X2 has on, on the Y. I mean, when it be, just like a slope. I mean, there's a slope and another slope. Print it out. You don't have to calculate this.